Coach, Coach Alabama's become kind of a house of horrors for Tennessee. I think dating back to 2016, you won once. Going, you know, going back what eight eight years now. The I want to go to the fourth quarter when you cut it to six. Before we move, you know, obviously move on to to Tasha Tuff and the next four possessions just uh, empty possessions. Yeah. I know you, I can hear you in the post game frustrated about it. I mean, I, I wanted to ask what do you do, but how much can you do at this point? It's execution. You watch film, but at what point do you just have to just let it go? Yeah, you know those. Um... We, we did an unbelievable job to get, get ourselves back in the game in that fourth quarter uh, very quickly. And, um, and then just made some mental mistakes on the offensive end. Um, obviously, the group that was in there um, probably was a little gassed. And, um, you know, in that, in that moment, um, you got to be tighter mentally. And that's where we, you, you know, you capitalize on a couple of those and that game might have gone a different way. So, um, you know, you've got to be, you got to be strong you, um, uh, in those moments. It, it, it was just, to me, a little bit of mental mistakes and the fatigue uh, with the kids that got out there and usually fatigue, the first thing to go is, is the mental piece. Went away with, you went away from Tamari about the four minute mark in that fourth quarter. Were you looking for something specific from your post group down the stretch? Um, she was tired. Uh, she was, she couldn't get to rebounds. Um, so we were just trying to get some, um, some different looks and give, give her a blow there. Um, uh, we didn't get her enough touches during the game. So we've gone back and looked at that, try to figure out how we can help our team do a better job, get the ball inside. And it's, it, you know, it's 50, 50. She's got to get a little bit better positioning for us. Was there anything in particular on film besides that, that maybe led to some offensive inefficiencies that you saw? Uh, I did not think we moved well. I uh, did not think we uh, uh, got the ball from side to side. I think a lot of that was we didn't score enough in transition. Uh, we've, we've done a really good job recently scoring in transition, and we didn't get that. Um, so then we weren't playing in open space. Uh, we weren't playing as freely as, as we uh, like to. So um, what we have to do in those moments when we are forced to play in a half-court set, we've got to do a better job with our execution. So cutting harder, screening a little better, and moving the ball. That effort to close the gap in the fourth quarter, what did you like the most about it and the effort that they put in? Well, I thought they had, they had a sense of urgency. Uh, I thought they were, we were much more aggressive on the offensive end. We actually scored in transition a couple times in that, in that stretch. Um, I, I, I thought we were locked in. Um, and, you know, just play really connected. With the shot selection, did you feel at some points, especially on the perimeter, that those were rushed and maybe had better looks inside? How would you evaluate that? Yeah, there were a few that, um, because we weren't shooting well from the perimeter, um, there were a few that we probably should have looked to attack instead of shooting. Uh, that's where we, we didn't get enough paint opportunities and, you know, that's, a, a, to me, it's a little bit of settling. You're settling for an outside shot rather than working to get something a, um, more aggressively in the paint. Uh, we had moments of that. Um, you know, our players were trying to adjust, but we just didn't have enough of it. What do you need to see from the team so that they can adjust in those moments or maybe play a bit smarter in those scenarios? Yeah, I think there was, to me, there were for, there were too many mental mistakes in this game. Um, some some uh, lapses defensively, just some maybe misunderstanding of what we need in that moment offensively, um, uh, probably a little bit more so than we've seen. So we just got to go back and, and reassure them that they know what they're doing. Um, they make good decisions. Uh, we just have to go out and do it. And I think, um, you know, going back and just reminding them the balance that we have and can have offensively is going to be important. On the defensive end, was there anything – Systemically, that led to them making nine of nine, ten of eleven. Or it was eleven of thirteen, uh, and the third. Oh. I, I tell you what, that um, I don't know if you're talking about the third quarter, but I'm going to talk about the third quarter. Um, specifically, they they went eleven for thirteen in that quarter, and part of it we had a we had a couple mental breakdowns where we we just had some misses on on where our assignments were. Um, uh, 
couple were transitioned. They got out uh, off a of, off a miss, got out and ran off a turnover, got out and ran, and then Alabama made some tough shots too. They they made some some 16 foot jumpers with a hand in their face. That's typically your lowest percentage shot on the court, and they made them in that quarter. So uh, a little bit of both. You know, I, I think if we could have maybe scored a couple more, we could have got our defense set a few more times, and it might have made a big difference. How can you make sure that that connection that they found in the fourth quarter lasts an entire game? Well, I think it's just the mental focus. Uh, they can do it. They, they've done it. Um, they can do it. And, you know, just it's going out and believing, believing in your teammate, believing in uh, yourself and, and having that urgency every single possession. Um, and, and they want to do it. So they're, you know, they're going to come out. All the technical things that we need to try to correct from that game, they're, they're going to really pour into that to try to get those things corrected. It feels like Ar Arkansas, um, they score a lot, uh, shoot a lot of threes. Just Kind of a two-part question the challenges of arkansas monday night and obviously this is the KEL game which raises awareness for all types of cancer but this one's going going to be particularly poignant because it's the tasha tough game and tasha just passed away last october at the age of 41 if you can just sort of talk about the challenges of arkansas and then the impact and meaning of that game monday okay um you know arkansas has been pretty consistent the last few years and and um, they walk in the gym ready to shoot the three. Um, they, they push the ball in transition. They, they are going to get layups. Uh, they're going to get kick out threes. They're going to the free throw line. Those are their, that's a, a three-headed monster. That's what they want. Um, they're, they're extremely quick on the perimeter, do an unbelievable job off the dribble getting to the paint. And if you help, they kick. Uh, so, so you've got to, you gotta be really good one-on-one -on -one defensively. They do a nice job with their ball screens to, to get you off of them, to open up some space. Can't typically sit in the paint because they do have shooters. So, uh, and their pace is hot. So um, they're, they're looking for this as early as uh, in train. They're looking for this in transition, not just in their half court set. So it'd be a huge challenge. Um, the game in particular, the meaning of the game, you know, everybody will be decked out in our pink and, you know, just to try to raise awareness um, and, and hopefully um, just be reminded of how this all got started um, several years ago with um, um, Kay Yao and her um, foresight to try to unite the women's basketball community for a cause, for a singular cause, and, and it was the play for Kay. Obviously for us, um, um, you know, we've, we've taken a couple of big hits this, this year and with losing um, some of our, our players, uh, former players. And um, we want to take this game in particular, we want to take the time to recognize and honor Tasha Butts and her legacy and try to honor her and who she was, not just as a Lady Vol, but as a person, as an athlete. And, you know, she had a great impact in our sport. And, and was able to coach several teams, demonstrate um, a toughness um, as she battled cancer. And, um, you know, it's, I, I, think it's a, I think it's really important. I think it's really important that we do that and, and uh, celebrate her life. And, you know, hopefully it's encouraging um, for all those others going through it, you know, that, that we're, we're, still, we're still fighting and, and looking for, um, research and looking for a cure. Quick follow-up, because I don't want to leave out Nikki McCray. Is the plan to honor her Thursday when South Carolina comes because obviously she coached there? Yeah, so, you know, I, we're in a very unique situation that, that we've got two amazing players that we lost. And, and so to, um, you know, a lot of different ways you can slice it, but what we've decided to do is um, not exclude, but focus on uh, Tasha Moore in our Monday game and then Thursday we're going to turn it into uh, an alumni type game and be able to honor Nikki McCray Pinson and um, you know be able to celebrate her and then allow South Carolina to do that as well because she obviously had a huge impact on that program. You guys obviously wear their initials on a lot of your um, gear. How much are they at the center of what you guys have done this season and this week specifically? Well I think you know it's um, we, we've tried to do several things to be able to um, to honor them and remember them, and um, you know we want to include their families as much as possible. I think that's important. Um, you know, you're just you're just reminded 
when we talk about this all the time as a as a program you just reminded so many times how short life is and um you know how you have to make the most of it each and every day and um in in the grand scheme of things um you know we're we're so blessed to be able to do what we do literally to come out here and play a basketball game in in front of a great crowd and really enjoy those moments um but you know it's it's a snap of a finger and and you're moving on to something else i just think um you know we're we're reminded too often but it's it's perspective and i think it's a opportunity for us to to have perspective on things bigger than basketball when you have a shooter like Jewel Spear, who you know can knock down three pointers, and she's having a bad night, what is your in-game message to her? Do you want her to keep shooting a three, or would you rather drive and look for something else? Yeah, I think both. I think she has to take good threes, but also I think she has to find um, other ways to impact the game. I think she has to look to put the ball on the floor. She she did put the ball on the floor some. Um, I, I still think she has to be super aggressive in those situations people are still going to come out and guard her they're not going to say hey she's missed a couple we're going to leave her open um and and i think jewel has that confidence to keep firing you talk a lot about mental toughness is there anyone on the team that the other lady balls can really look up to that's really embraced being mentally tough day in and day out i, I think jewel has has done a really good job of uh bouncing back and um you know, handling adversity uh, with with a very positive voice for our teammates and and presents a confidence that I think uh, they need to see. Whenever you have a night like against Alabama, where Jewel is having a rough night and Ricky isn't putting up twenty, what do you want the offense to look like on this night? Well, I think it, that you've really got to um, you've got to be aggressive. Uh, I think you've got to share the ball. You, we've got to do a better job executing screening, and um, sometimes you have to uh, find the easier look. You know, I, I mentioned it earlier, you, you, in those moments you can't settle. Uh, you, you've got to be able to uh, find some find some rhythm somewhere else. And, and for us, we were trying to find it on the drive. We were trying to put the ball on the floor and attack the paint. Uh, with teams, you know, having these initiatives, whether it's, you know, play for K, mm -hmm. touch tub, lead back pat, is it all just a reminder of the community that surrounds women's basketball, that no one's really alone in any cause that they're trying to support? Yeah, you know, I think, um, in the in the last 10 years or so you've seen a, a lot of people using our sport and using sports in general um for for platforms you know and i think we've got some amazing causes whether it's um we're celebrating pat summit and her foundation or we're um, honoring our former players in in our um, play for k game you know, there's there's a lot of really great causes out there we can't and we can't support every one of them we can't you know we can't have everything at, at, at each game but i think the the ones that we um that we promote the the ones that we bring to light in our community i, I think it's positive and i do think it reminds everybody that life's just bigger than basketball quick question about rakia obviously she hit 2000 here then she didn't score in the second half, and she looked a little frustrated. If you're a scorer, you want to see some points on the board. I was wondering, I hope that doesn't bleed over to the next game, but she seemed out of sorts in that game. How do you just sort of get her reoriented? Because you know she can score. Oh, absolutely. You know, and, and you know, <laughs> she, had a, she had a good game. Um, didn't get as many clean looks um, in the second half in that particular game that you're referring to. Um, you know, I think... Rakia just has to remember she can impact the game in every area, every single category. She can impact the game. And, um, you know, obviously her strength is scoring. We know that. The opponents know that. Uh, she knows that. And, and she's going to have a lot of opportunities to do that. But, um, you know, any time that, to me, any time a player is frustrated, whether it's her or someone else, and in its frustration with scoring, you just have to remember there are so many ways that you can impact the game in a positive way, and and it takes the pressure off of the scoring. Quick follow up: I, I can't remember a time where you really were struggling with everybody on the floor to score to get what you needed. Are you, do you think okay, we flush that for the rest of the season? That's done. That 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 will not happen again. Where our, our primary scores are both struggling. Well, as a coach, you don't uh, you don't assume that's going to happen. I mean, you hope it is that we're done. But uh, as a coach, we're going to try to 
make sure if we're in that situation again that our players feel more comfortable and, and where we can go and, and what's next. And, um, you know, go, it goes back to just a little bit sharper execution, just a little, you know, a little bit harder cut, a little bit better screen, um, making sure we know there are other areas we can go to. It, you know, I think sometimes when you're not scoring, you tighten up and you, and you narrow your focus. And, f and for us, in those moments, we need to broaden our scope. We need to look at everyone, and, and, and I think we can do that. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you.